with Dick Gregory, who doesn't need any introduction, an iconic civil rights uh, activist, uh, of course, comedian. He was on the front line of the 60s uh, during the civil rights era and has been f fighting for freedom ever since then. Gregory has been arrested for civil disobedience several times and has activism has uh, him to run for mayor of Chicago in 66 and for president in 68 in the early 70s. Uh, Gregory abandoned comedy to focus on his political interests, which widened from race relations to include such issues as violence, world hunger, capital punishment, drug abuse, poor health care. He was recently arrested with George Clooney outside the Sudanese embassy. So I respect Dick Gregory and know he's a really great guy uh, who, who does care about freedom and has a lot of courage. He's been on this show before. He's talked about 9-11, you name it. Now, I'm going to be honest, though, Dick, as for George Clooney... I want to believe that he means well, but the State Department people who are using him to push for a war in Sudan and other areas, I don't see that, just to preface this here so you know where I'm coming from, I don't see that as the West wanting to go in there to actually stop some of the brutal leaders who, who are abusing and killing Christians. I've been talking about that for a decade. Sure. I see it as a pretext, just like Iraq. We just saw Libya. That was a total pretext, you know, to go in there and take over. And now there's ethnic cleansing of the black uh, uh, Libyans by some of the Arabs. I mean, it's definitely worse than it was. I'm not saying Gaddafi was perfect, but he was building up all of Africa. And so when I see the State Department that supported that behind Darfur and, and, and you know, uh, Sudan and, and all of this, it just... I just find it suspicious. Now, you're there getting arrested, and I respect that. So tell us, out of the gates, why uh, you know, you're know you supporting uh, what's going on there. I'm supporting what's going on there. Let, let me just back up for a minute. One of the most brutal, brutal, brutal mentions in modern times, mainly because of the fastness of the news and television, was when James Byrd was lynched and dismangled. Uh, by three white men in Texas. And because of the fastness and the conscience of people, they arrested the three whites that did it before they identified who the black man was. Uh, one of them was sentenced to a long sentence. The other two were sentenced to death. I'm against the death penalty. I was there with a group of people when they killed the first one about four months ago. In Huntsville, Texas, I stood outside of there with a prayer vigil and said, you know, killing by the state is wrong. You give me life in jail, and that's punishment. When you give me death, that's revenge. And so I don't, I don't draw the line or, or worry. I, truth don't never have to be validated by ignorance. And the, 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 the people who contacted me and didn't understand, I, I don't do things according to your understand. Killing is wrong by the state. Now, I say that to preference why I went to jail the other day. The rainy season is coming, and there'll be like three to 600,000 people that will starve to death. That's what I was there for, and I would be there for anybody. Starvation. I was with Bobby Sands. I went there when Bobby Sands was starving himself to death in the jail. I go wherever there seemed to be injustices with women and children and talking about eating. I'm not into their politics. A whole lot of people can be in the politics and still feed people. I mean, here in America, they talking about about 30 million meals a day in schools. And we got politicians here that say, wait a minute, uh, ketchup uh, is a vegetable. Uh, 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 pizza is good nutrition. And French fries. My act was, if you go to visit your mother and father and your friends on Thanksgiving and they give you ketchup, pizza, and French fries, you know how they feel about you. And, and the fact that we would do that to children, I believe Hitler would do it to Jews, but I don't believe Hitler would have put that crap in the schools for Germans. So when you look around at a filthy system, that stuff has been going on over and over and over and over again. I never thought I would see the day that I could say I'd rather be killed by someone than kill someone. That's what the Civil Rights Movement did to me. That's where it changed me. John Wayne was my hero, man. I'm 80 years old. We didn't have no television, my little boy. And John Wayne said, if you're right and they're wrong, kill them. 
And then what, Dr. King came around and said, no, 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 no. Killing is not right. It's about love. And then I look at the outcome. It is about love. Not love, but can you be lovable? And so, so if someone had captured brutal, brutal people and said they was going to starve them to death, I'd be on the front line and said, no, 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 no. This is, there's, there, there's other ways of dealing out justice and starving people to death is not one of them. That's why I was there and that's why I was in jail. Well, let me just be clear. I only brought this up out of the gates uh, because I had noticed that you'd been on the uh, list of arrested uh, people. And I know that you always get behind causes that you believe uh, are, are, are good and just. And, and, and so I respect you. And I had just been talking last week about Angelina Jolie, who went to the border uh, of Libya there in Tunisia last October and called over and over again for invasion and bombing. And I know that 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 was about destabilizing Africa. So I got very, very angry with her. The UN's constantly caught doing evil things. I understand they talk about a bunch of good stuff they want to do, and then good people like yourself and others give them money, give them time, give them energy. And I saw George Clooney go up there and talk about how you know, folks are flying over there uh, in Sudan and then dropping bombs on the Christians. And, and I don't like that. But then I think, okay, George, well, well, what about our government with drones in 14 countries dropping bombs and saying it's okay to kill 200 people at a wedding as long as you kill one guy you claim was bad? My whole point is when I see Fox News with George Clooney on and Fox News is saying, yeah, this is good, let's go in there, I'm like, wait a minute. All I know is this war machine that's run by these big foreign banks, they'll use people's concern about something wrong that's going on, but then actually double cross everybody. I mean, take take uh, Joseph Coney, hadn't been seen in all these years. Sure. And now we're hearing, oh, we gotta go into there. What about the leader of that country that's been connected? I mean, uh, all I'm saying is I've learned that when they tell me we gotta attack this country because of WMDs or we gotta go into Sudan because the Muslims are killing the Christians, I know they are, I don't like it. But, but at the same time, I don't see our government wanting to go in there to actually help people. It's always to get the natural resources. I, I mean, do you see what I'm saying? I was yeah, just... But look, let me tell you something. You know things that most folks don't know. There's a whole lot of people that get involved emotional and humanitarian that, that don't know the black. I've been knowing Gaddafi been CIA since he was 15 years old. My grandmother don't know that. Huh? I'm one of the people who believe, if I'm stupid enough to believe Gaddafi is your dad, <laughs> please. Then my mother was Jesus, okay? <laughs> but this is what you learn from research. This is what you learn from putting, you know, you make the show look easy. But let me tell you something. I bump into people that, that swear by you because they know when I, when I take it from here, I don't have to worry about the New York Times and the Washington Post. But you worked hard to do that. You worked hard to check and recheck. There's a whole lot of people that don't know. My mother, if she was alive today, she didn't know with the King James Version of the Bible. She died for that. She didn't know King James was king of England. She didn't know King James was such a weird, strange homosexual. He hated women so bad he killed his mother. And his lover was Lord Buckingham, who Buckingham Palace is named after. She didn't know that. If my mother walked in your studio today, you think God spit her out. That's how precious and kind and sweet. But if you try to convince my mother that Jesus Christ wasn't a Christian, she'd stomp you to death. But she didn't know Christianity never happened till a hundred years after Jesus was dead. So you have a whole lot of people out here that don't have proper information, including my mother if she was alive. And so somewhere when you sit and look at those of us that have the information, in a few weeks, we be celebrating the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King on April 4th. Now, you know this, but there's a whole lot of people that's not aware when you see that famous picture, King's laying on the ground and all of these people's pointing up. Now, come on now, if a shot is fired and I'm on a balcony, we all gonna hit the ground. Now, nobody's going to get, how'd they know it wasn't going to be a second shot? And here's Dr. King laying on the ground, and nobody was saying, are you all right? What was it? So, well, we see this, and we've been out there dealing with it for years. I'm the one that released the picture with Ron Brown, the, 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 the Secretary of Commerce, with the bullet in the back of his head, and they couldn't deny it because... The coroner. The, 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 
they the ones brought the picture to me, so they couldn't deny it. But you think the New York Times, the Washington Post would run it? Not until I went to jail. Not until I went to jail on Christmas Eve did that story run. Wow, you know, we should talk about that. Uh, absolutely, I just raised the whole point. So, so you... Uh, so you think George Clooney really uh, means well then? With the wait, 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 wait. I'm not getting into that. That's like somebody asking me, somebody to you think Dick Gregory mean well when he's standing there with this this, this, this white Klansman that's fixing to get the lecture? Yeah, I'm not getting into that. No, no, the only reason I ask you is I was getting ready to do a whole video um, on George Clooney, and I'm really trying to find out whether I should go after him or not. Not for even getting arrested there, but for pushing for military intervention. I do think we should help the people of southern Sudan. Uh, it's just that I just don't see... It's like the death penalty. We're going to break, but I want to come back and talk about this with you and get into Ron Brown, get into um, uh, MLK, RFK, JFK, whatever you want to get into, because you, you know, you're so well informed on it. All I'm trying to say uh, is that it's like the death penalty. I believe somebody that murders a child, some serial killer, I want him to die. But I can't trust this corrupt government to carry out the execution because that's an even greater danger. Dick Gregory's our guest. We'll be right back with him on the other side of this quick break. You can say what you want about Dick Gregory, but he really is an iconic figure. Uh, he was part of Wounded Knee while they were shooting the place up from what I was reading. Uh, thousands of rounds of ammo poured in there. He went in there to be uh, you know, peacefully stand with those that were under attack. I mean, he's been everywhere and done everything. Uh, they've got that Johnny Cash song, I've Been Everywhere, man. We got interrupted by the break, moving away from Clooney and Darfur and Sudan and you know that whole nightmare situation over there. Expanding on what you were trying to talk about with um, the Commerce Secretary. I remember it was you that forced it out because the coroners had leaked it. He'd been shot in the head. And of course, then they guided the plane in. And yeah. uh, but uh, uh, tell folks about that story, I mean, because there's so many other things you've witnessed. And then I want to ask you about President Obama. Here's one of the things that when uh, when when the coroner brought it to me, well, I was really touched. And here's the reason why: it was seven folks, one woman, maybe two women, five males. One of the the males was up. To, to move and to be in a general. After that, all of that stopped. I had seven white folks came to me about a black man who had been murdered and there was no plane wreck. And I had to ask myself, if you, Dick Gregory, was ready to be elevated to a, a general in the United States military, and no, God knows how far you could go, uh, if a white guy had a bullet in the back of his head, you know, would you get involved? Would you get involved with this? At the expense of your family, they did, man. This is, my life has moved me into situations where I've been able to see things. And then I have to question, God, man, how do this? When I was Clooney the other day in jail, I'm thinking that's the first time he's ever been to jail. Now, his program while we were there was talking about we got a short window. We had a meeting in the jail. And I said, man, a bell didn't ring inside of me. If you got X amount of weeks before these people, and I said, look, let me tell you, I, I'm going to eat nothing but liquids until they move that blockade. I'm not interested in the war. That, 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 I'm interested in all wars. Right now, look, if I fall off the 18th floor window and I come to your hospital and your doctors and teams are around and I got a broken ankle, a fractured skull, I got cracked ribs, I got all kinds of stuff, and my heart stops, huh? Everybody got to stop doing what they're doing to work on my heart. That's the way I look at this problem over there. I know what this country's doing. I know see, most black folks think white supremacy is the Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan don't determine public policy. Most white folks don't even understand what white supremacy is. That's why when all these folks say, I saw UFOs, we were shooting at them, I'm the Air Force, can't nobody admit it. Why? Because once you admit that white supremacy goes out the window, organized religion goes out the window, and then we become earthlings. We would be earth people. And there's nothing in my grandma's head that could commit her to believe there could be 
a Baptist on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> so when you sit and look at where this is going and how much information is out here that's been tricked and, 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 and twisted and all of that, let me tell you, I know stuff about that Kennedy shooting. And if you ever hear me read anything I say, I'm one of the few people that don't say when he was assassinated. But there's certain things you don't say because you would discredit yourself. I see horror stories out here. When I was in, 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 I was in New York on September the 10th and the 11th because the head of the ACLU for 20 years had been fighting police brutality cases. And and now he's running for uh, uh, public uh, something. I'll think of it in a minute. Uh, 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 and so so a woman called me, a black woman, and she said, "Look, uh, this white brother here in the last twenty years have cost the New York City about five, four to five billion dollars winning and selling police brutality cases. And he's running for a public advocate." And uh, what would it cost you to come in and, 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 and campaign for him? And said, I, I'm the one that wanted. And I said, no, I know him. I, I'll do it for free. And here's the conditions. On the 10th, 01, I come in, we hold a press conference. And on the 11th, give me a team to go into the black community and tell black folks who this man is and take him to the polls. And uh, I called my wife that night and said, baby, well, you got me sleeping tonight. I live in Massachusetts. She said, you're not. A friend of yours called and said, don't spend the night in New York tonight. Whoa, stay there. We got to come back. Got a call. Get out of New York. We'll be right back. Amazing. Dick Gregory. We're going to get into President Obama and what Dick Gregory thinks of the work he's been doing here in just a moment. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Alex Jones. The websites are InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Notice here in uh, Dick's bio, there's really no websites to plug, but I should ask him. I know he's just out there promoting peace and you know, his view of the world. Love him or hate him, you've got to admit the guy's consistent and certainly an open mind and a great comedian in his own right. And he's a uh, living history book. He's seen so much. Uh, Mr. Gregory, uh, you were getting into the fact that a friend called because you're asking, hey, where am I sleeping in New York? And folks just joined us. Uh, in your own words, recap that and continue. Well, I called my wife at the night of the 10th. And I said, hey, dear, where well, you got me sleeping tonight? She handles all my hotel train. She said, you're not. Your friend called me and told me the name. He said, don't tell you, don't spend the night in New York tonight. So I trust him. I know who he is. I know what level of consciousness. So I go to the train station and get me a train out coming to Washington, D.C. And midnight, I get here at four in the morning and I can't wait to get off the plane, the train to call this friend of mine. So I called him and uh, there's nothing you can say on the phone. I said, how did you know I was in New York? He said, we picked you up on the satellite, brother. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I don't know what, what was gonna happen, Many of us been knowing about blowing up the World Trade Building. I didn't know the date. There were some people that knew that. I didn't know the date. It's called Operation Binko. That's how long we knew about it when we busted some folks in the Philippines and found it in their hard drive. So all this old stuff that da da da, da and all that, 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 that's the game that they played. Yeah, Bojinko. Yeah. And so, so consequently, I, uh, I go home and I call some folks from my apartment. I said, man, I wasn't planning on being here in D.C., and in D.C., we walk every morning at like 5 o'clock. So I said, so uh, sit back an hour, and uh, I'll meet you in the park. And so when I get back home, my wife and one of my children had called me and told me a uh, plane had hit the World Trade Building. I'm thinking like a pot, one of them Piper Cubs like we saw in King Kong, right? And so while I'm getting dressed to meet them for a, 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 a talk about a demonstration at the Capitol, uh, I see the other plane hit the building. I said, oh. So now I call my friend who tipped me off. <laughs> and I said, wow. And all he said is, you owe me one. <laughs> you don't talk on the phone, right? And so now I start watching everything. Now I shut down. I call Lil and said, I'm out of circulation. I call a couple researchers and said, 
put on every TV you got in your house and watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. And then so all at once now, the second plane, the, the, the second plane hit. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, those of you that's listening. If you work for NBC or CBS or ABC, and you was the one that captured that picture of that second building being hit, you'd have a Nobel, you'd have a, a Pulitzer Prize, you'd make $40,000 a speech, and your name would be world-renowned. How come we don't know the person that took that picture? Hmm? It's just, just simple deduction. How come we don't know the person that took that picture? Now I'm looking, and I know what to look for. I know when, when, when the stuff hit, you're dealing with people's emotions. You can put all kind of stuff down. Then you get the Pentagon. Okay, it got hit, right? Well, now let's look. The Pentagon, that plane came in six feet off the ground. How you gonna have a plane doing six feet off the ground doing 450 miles an hour? That's impossible. You can't do that. But let's say it did. Now, if you know where the Pentagon is, and you you move out from the Pentagon, you got the highway, and you keep moving. You got Arlington Cemetery, and all the four plane that hit the Pentagon is six feet off the ground. It had to come through Arlington Cemetery. There's not one tree or lamppost knocked down in Arlington Cemetery. Now, one of the tricks they'll do is right after something happened, you got a cab driver say, you know, I saw it come in, and I, I was scared. You don't know if that's an agent or not. You don't know who that is. They've already got people playing of what they're going to say. You think they're just some order. And one of the things that's going to bring this country down to its knees is a handful of cops. I'm not talking about these ones we see in the street that know that homicide when they call it suicide and all that. They know it. And... The news media knows it. I'm not talking about these reporters. I'm talking about the news media that put the tricks down and, and feel this out and say so-and-so saw this. They don't want their name done. And so when you sit and you look at that whole Pentagon, now here's another thing. There was five buildings, zero to be hit, five places. The World Trade Building, the White House, the Pentagon, the Sears Tower, and uh, the big bank out there in San Francisco. Now, here's something that's interesting. Now, if nobody knew this, hmm, then why is it that nobody evacuated Baltimore? I mean, you're going to hit the Pentagon and supposed to hit the, the, the White House and all the government activity that go on in Baltimore and all the way up the 95th uh, uh, corridor, you got, you got the, 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 the space headquarters and all of that, nobody evacuated that? Nobody evacuated Pennsylvania, Philadelphia? How'd you know? I mean, how did you know it was just going to be those? And then when you go back into Chicago, uh, they evacuated the Sears Tower. We knew that was on one of the zero. Right down the street is the Standard Oil building. It was just a couple of stories shorter than how come nobody evacuated that? Because they knew what the targets were. Yes, they knew what the targets were. And so I'm saying, when you sit, and you know, my poor mother and grandma, if they was alive, they'd be duped into it too. <laughs> and so when you have that kind of hard core. Now, for those of you all that's listening, let me tell you what, what you need to do. On September the 11th, now in America, we don't list state by the number. The, 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 the month, we say September, Halloween, October 31st. Why do they use a number for that one? Because it's 911, and any time you don't say September 11th and you say 911, it tells the brain to be scared, okay? That's right. For instance, if any of you all listening walked into your house this evening and someone was on the phone, your mother, your father, your wife, your children, and you said, who are you talking to? So I just dialed 911. What kind of look comes over your face? Listen, when I see 911 on a clock now, I, I see it as an ill omen. They did it as a, they even picked a number to program everybody. The passports magically survived. Hijackers trained at U.S. bases. But i got to go back here because uh, I hadn't heard you talk in this much detail about what you just discussed. Uh, Dick Gregory, a civil rights icon, is our guest. We just tuned in. But there is something of what you speak on record. Mayor Willie Brown. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. He admitted that wait, he got wait, wait, wait. warned. No, 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 no. Let, let me handle that, would you? <laughs> All right. That's what I was getting ready to tell your listeners. Pull up the 
San Francisco Chronicle on September the 12th, the next day, hmm? September the 12th. And that's where they had a front page story where Willie Brown had been told by his bodyguard not to take his flight into New York City that Tuesday. Hmm? Now, I don't have no problem with that. I got a problem with this. When a reputable newspaper, as far as newspapers are concerned, not one other newspaper ran that story. Huh? It slipped through that he was told don't fly September 10th on September 11th, and the reported person that told the bodyguards that made the call was Condoleezza Rice. Know, hey, we all knew that, huh? <laughs> well, well, right there, don't fly to New York, but they didn't know anything about the attacks. But no, no, that don't bother me. What bothers me is who told the New York Times they print stories out of papers. I thought, man, if a pimp walk up there, if, if, if the San Francisco Chronicle report a pimp shot five prostitutes to death and beat their mothers to death, that story would run all over the world. Okay? Yes. Now, how come not one newspaper ran that story, okay? Now, go back to that Friday, which was, Tuesday was the 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. The Friday, uh, San Francisco Chronicle, the ex-Secretary of State, George Schultz, said he knew seven days before. That's it right. The front page story. Okay, so we're not talking about a mayor. We're talking about the ex-Secretary of State. And as you know, Dick, he's a major kingmaker, uh, you know, um, at some levels, some believe even higher up than even Kissinger that actually call on the shots. I mean, he's a guy who knows where all the bodies are buried. And then there was also what an Associated Press blurb that the Joint Chiefs of Staff canceled flights to New York on for September 11th. Yep. I mean, so they all knew. And these are real articles. Colonel Stephen Butler was yep. told... Uh, it said that they, they trained some of the people on the hijacker list at their base. He said the government was behind it, and they started uh, the uh, move to court-martial him until he shut up. Sure. So we'd be crazy. 9-11, the government was absolutely conscious and let it happen bare minimum. Well, you know, here's what they'll do. They'll come out 50 years from now. And, and and admit certain things, and then people overlook it and this and that. But now let me just show you something else. I had a friend of mine, and I said, do me a favor. I want you to look at all the flights on a five-day period, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Look at it for two years. All your major flights coming out of Hartford, Connecticut, going to the West Coast, coming out of Boston Airport, going to the West Coast. Coming out of Kennedy, going to the West Coast. Coming out of Philadelphia, direct nonstop flights. Coming out of Washington, D.C., Dallas, going to the West Coast. And here's what we found out. We found out that on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that if you wanted to book a first class from any of those airports going to the West Coast because you, you gain three hours, you gain a whole business day, you have to book about a month in advance to get first class about three days in advance to get a, a seat on coach. That's every one of them flights. That day, all of those flights from from Boston, going to San Francisco, going to L.A., uh, uh, from Philly Airport, from Kennedy, from Washington, D.C., all of those flights was about 34% full. Yes. Okay. So I'm saying when you sit... And they all got tipped off. That's why there were kids locally saying those towers won't be there next week. Yeah. I mean, this was everywhere. And then there was that weird base in... Um, it was up in uh, Nebraska where hundreds of CEOs had been told, come to a special meeting a week before, yeah. and then they closed the hangar and showed them some video, and they all came out, freaked out, and Warren Buffett was running it. I mean, you're talking about weirdness. Well, I very seldom somebody will tell you something that you don't know. But if you don't know this, look in this and tell your folks. Those those little uh, uh, training 
where those, those Arabs were supposed to have gone taking their training in Florida. Yes. Those schools is owned by Warren Buffett. Hmm? Did you hear me? No, I didn't. All right. No, I mean, I heard you. I didn't know that. Okay. That, that was owned by Warren Buffett, right? Now, let me just tell you something very interesting. Do you remember Martha Mitchell? Yes. She was kidnapped, right? Yes. And then a week later, she died from some kind of strange cancer, right? Yes. Now, anytime you can kidnap the Attorney General's wife huh, of the United States, when you become the Attorney General of the United States, you're the number one cop in the world because America is the number one mightiest power on the planet, okay? Now, when you can kidnap the Attorney General's wife of the United States, and as we talk right now, brother, nobody's ever been arrested for that kidnap? Huh? Did you hear me? No, you're right. Okay, now, why was she kidnapped? Because she heard uh, her husband and a bunch of the old white boys sitting around in their living room with their cognac talking about when the World Trade Building was going to be blown up. She was outraged. She, no, she wasn't in the room. This was the white boy meeting. And she got on him and said, well, I'm going to tell the world on Monday. I hold a press conference. She was kidnapped, man. Shot her in the butt with a cancer shot. And she died. And we keep paying our rent. And we keep doing this and looking at all this whole crazy kind of stuff. And don't know what's really going on. And so, consequently, when you sit and look. Now, while I was watching this, the people started getting tired and they started making mistakes. Now, ask you a question now. If that, that building has, oh, 54,000 people who work there in the World Trade, and by evening there's over 120,000 people in the building, people coming there for business, coming for, yes. for to, to view and all that. Now, around the corner, a block and a half around the corner, is Fire Station 7, something like that. They go there every day, year-round, a minimum of 50 times, maximum of 75. Why? Because if your uh, smoke detector blow out, you can get a fuse and put in it. But because of the insurance on a building like that, the amount of people that's in there, you can't do that. You have to call the fire department, and they'll send someone there. You'll get a bill for it to put that fuse in and then clear that it's working, okay? So I'm going to say this again. That fire station, a block and a half company, go there a minimum of 50 times every day, a maximum of 75. On September the 11th, there was 343 firefighters killed. That's not counting the ones that were injured. That's not counting the cops. It's firefighters. Not one firefighter was killed and injured from number seven, a block and a half. Okay? A block and a half from the World Trade Building. Not one of those firefighters was injured or killed. Did somebody know something? I mean, firefighters came from all over the city, and many of them died or was injured. Right around the corner, nothing. And so when you sit and you think about, you know, how it works and how maybe, so I'm watching it. I'm looking at it because I know what they do. I'm looking at it and I'm looking at it and then they start getting tired. And then I heard CNN interview a guy and he says, uh, said, where were you when this happened? This was a day later. I said, well, I was, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to school to be a first responder. And uh, I got about six months, and, and then I heard this awful noise, and I started running towards it. And I open up this door, and I go in there, and there's about 100 FBI and Homeland Security people there. There. I said, what do you mean? I said, I wondered how they got there that quick. Two days later, they was interviewing one of the guys from Homeland Security, and I guess he was just tired. He said, yeah, we sent a team in here two days before it happened so we could be in place. Yeah, that was Kennedy. And then he said, I was a mistake. And later it was confirmed the whole drill that was used to cover up wiring the buildings was called Tripod 2. And they'd already moved out of all the buildings, their own offices, to run the drill from the end of the pier, blowing it all up.
unfortunately, we're almost out of time, and it was all this news I wanted to go over with with Dick Gregory, but uh, the time has gone so fast, and I promise you, it won't be two years till the next time he's back on. Um, uh, in fact, I hope to get him on regularly because he's such an interesting person. I've got to bring it up or folks will get mad because we've had the phone lines filling up saying, ask him about Obama. What does he think about Obama? What is your view? And, and I understand at the end of the day, I see it as positive that, you know, America could elect a, a black president just because it shows some unity. But I see the system is doing it as a way to actually drive wedges in the final equation. And he's he's signing in martial law provisions, NDAA. Uh, all of this is happening and he's he's able to do things Bush could never get away with because of the left cover. Uh, in the final equation, what do you think's going on with Barack Obama, Dick Gregory? Well, I put it this way: uh, I was one of the ones that was thrilled while he got elected. I just said, "Wow, it's going to run so many people crazy." And we saw that happen on the on inauguration day when you have one of the most powerful men in the world, uh, the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice. He all he got to do is read two sentences and looked up and saw that black face and messed up. <laughs> now, <laughs> now nobody, we, we we jump on a redneck for doing something, but when somebody with his power would do it, we kind of ignore it and say blah blah blah. And so I'm so glad because it might with all of the other stuff. I mean, am I living in a country where they telling me it is easier for a black person to be elected president than to be a senator? Are you telling me I got a black president and I don't have a black senator? You know, so it's a whole lot of stuff hooked around that. I was hoping that Herman Cain would have won the nomination for the Republicans. And then America would have two black men to pick from. <laughs> one that, that they say is a genius. And the other one, they made him come off looking like Buck Wheat. You know? <laughs> But let me tell you something about Herman Cain. I've been telling people for two years, watch a black man named Herman Cain, one of the brilliant minds on the planet. And people laugh when they saw the script they wrote for him. But let me tell you who human Herman Cain is. Herman Cain was chairman of the Kansas City Federal Reserve. I know you knew that, right? Yes. Did you know that out of the 12 Federal Reserves in America, Kansas City was the first one? Did you know that? Well, I, uh, yes, and I also know it's very, very powerful. Did you, did, and also, when you go to the and see the movie or the play, The Wizard of Oz, do you know Oz? Do you know that's about the Kansas City Federal Reserve? Yes, sir, I did know that. Hey, that's how vicious they were, the wicked, wicked. And so we got to ask yourself, well, who is Herman Cain? And so when I sit and I look at what's going on and what's happening, uh, my grandmother, you understand? See, what, 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 what I have to be careful of is the way people treat celebrities. There's a whole lot of celebrities. You had a white boy that, that that left his wife in the car, Beretta, and went back in to get his gun and came back and she was dead and nobody's asked him, why you, why you have, why you carrying a gun? What, you took it in the restaurant? Did, did you check it or did you take it? Is it normal to go in the restaurant and eat, take your gun, sit in a chair? Celebrity status. And when you look at Obama, He's a celebrity to a lot of young folks and to a lot of black folks. And they let celebrities, that you don't have to ask many things. Look at, look at uh, uh, Tiger Woods. He was a celebrity to black folks in a white, racist, sexist system. I live in a country where white boys, all they had to do was call a white woman a witch and they could burn her at the stake. And we have never washed this filth off. So when you get somebody come down the line that, that looks to look, and talks to talk, and as a celebrity, I, as a black person, I know a whole lot of stuff about a whole lot of people I wouldn't dare say on this radio show or no other radio show. I bet. You know what? Five more minutes of overdrive. This is amazing. Back in 60 seconds, InfoWars.com. We were just talking during the break, and you were going off into Obama. Uh, please repeat what you were saying, sir. I was saying, you know, uh, I, I knew many years before he was elected, we're getting ready for a black president. When you got four movies come out of Hollywood showing black men as presidents, they weren't comedies. And the number one TV show on the land was 24, uh, a black president assassinated by the Secretary of State, so he really better keep his eye on Hillary. <laughs> Please. Oh, yeah, Hillary, super bad news. 
So, I mean, you've had a chance to meet President Obama? No, I never. Look, look, if I was invited to the White House today, I wouldn't go because when you take all the things that I've said that go on in this country and they would say, well, let me tell you about Dick Gregory. Here's what he said. I don't know. No, no. He got his own problems. I, I'm not, let I'm me not, ask you this, though. If you were standing before Barack Obama, uh, because I know a lot of these presidents are just reading off teleprompters, but he's obviously a very smart guy, but he's following orders. I mean, if I was in front of Obama, I'd say, I understand that you're, you're blackmailed, all these things, but you should really back up, you know, back off all this corruption. I mean, what would you say to Obama if, if, if you had two minutes to talk to him? If I had two minutes to talk to him, I'd say, one, uh, I'm so glad you was president of the United States because I have to apologize to all white folks because before you became president, I was convinced that all Black folks look alike to white folks. Now that you're the president, I haven't had one white person walk up to me and say, excuse me, Mr. President, <laughs> so I know we don't all look alike. The other thing I'd ask him, i say, man, I'm having a financial problem. Would you be my co-signer? Hmm? <laughs> okay. Can you talk to the people in, in China and see if they would, you know, clip me a little long like they slip y'all? <laughs> That's all I'd say to him. He don't have no control over what's going on. No president has control. You know that. They don't have no control over what's going on. When Kennedy thought they had control, they had a bullet waiting for him. When Bobby thought, I'm going to get in and find out they had a bullet waiting for him. Let me tell you this story real quick. I'm doing Irv Cups in the show in Chicago the, the first day of June. And no, 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 it was the last of May. And me and Bobby was close friends. And Bobby said to me during the commercial, said, uh, uh, when you going to come to California and help me uh, during the primary? And I said, when you going? He said, tonight. I said, well, give me my, give me my dollar. You owe me. And now I don't know the commercials often. We back on. And Herb comes said, what y'all talking about? I said, he owe me a dollar. And he said he's going to California tonight for the primary. And I'm telling him, nah, if he wins, he'll never leave there alive. Now, about three days after Bobby was killed, Herb comes and called me and had the show. He said, Dick, you okay? I said, yeah, what do you mean? Come on, you can be honest with me. I'm your friend. Are you okay? I said, I'm okay. What do you mean? He said, Bobby. What do you mean? He said, well, the FBI came in here and ransacked my office and got that tape where you were saying what you're saying. And I said, no, they wouldn't dare come by my house. So that was, that's the life I live, man. Wow. You know what? I've got to get you back on the show soon just to talk about the history you've witnessed. So the FBI wanted the tape of that radio broadcast where you were able to predict that they were going to kill him. So I can tell you, but I can never show you the piece of tape, right? <laughs> Wow. That's the, that, that's the whole game. The FBI, see, Hoover thought he was in charge. They killed Hoover. Man, they found Hoover sitting on the toilet trying to get that poison out of him. And then Ram sacked his whole, Ram sacked his whole thing. He thought he had some power, and he didn't realize there's a group bigger than him. Hmm? There's a group bigger than Queen Elizabeth. I don't have to tell you, you know, you know London is not part of Britain. You know that. The city of London within it is the ancient megabanks, and they... That's right. They are nasty, nasty. And, and, and you know, well, how nasty, you know when Queen Elizabeth want to go into London, she got to get permission from the Lord Mayor. You know that. Right? That's right. And you know if they give her permission, she got to come in dressed as a servant, right? Yep. Okay, so so we see they got us believe in this one thing over there. And, and let me take this last second to say this to you. There's certain people... That's full capital punishment under certain idiots. Hold on, hold on. These breaks are pre-programmed. I want to stay there. This is amazing. What's up with these sorry politicians? Lots of bark. But when it's showtime, whimpering like little shih tzus. You want big cuts. Lon Paul's been screaming it for years. Budget crisis, no problem. Got a trillion bucks year one. That's trillion with a T. Department of Education, gone. Interior, energy, HUD, commerce, gone. Later, bureaucrats. That's how Ron Paul rolls. Want to train the swamp? Ron Paul. Do it. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message.